In Window 2019, we have added some additional options for how you can list uh, door or window IDs in schedules. Now, this functionality is tied in with spaces and also styles, so we'll talk about using both of these to produce schedules. Let's start by taking a look at this conventional schedule where we have basically one row in the schedule for each different door. And this is kind of a traditional way of doing it. But you'll notice one uh, differentiating fe feature here, and that is that each of these doors is telling you what room it belongs to. And the way that we're able to do that is by linking the window object to a space. So let's start off by taking a look at how you do that. In this simple little building here, we have a space object that's linked to the walls within this space. And we have another space object here. This one represents Office 1 and Office 2. If you haven't been using spaces, I strongly recommend you get yourself familiar with them. Uh, they offer a lot of benefits in terms of not only naming rooms, numbering rooms, getting areas and so on, but uh, being able to specify room finishes and so on. So the way that you link a window object to a space is by using the window ID tool. And this is in the DIMS notes tool set. And if we scroll down, we'll see the window ID tool here. Now this tool allows you to position IDs and also to renumber IDs by clicking on various IDs in the order that you want to number them. But we added an, an alternative mode for it. And if we click the settings button, you can see there's a new mode here called Link Window Objects to Space. And when you do this, what you need to do is to click on the window object and then click on the space, and that will link that window object to the space. It's as simple as that. Now, if you notice, and I'll just zoom in here a little bit, this is B1101, so that information is coming from this space, this uh, room number here. And for a moment, I'll just link this over to this one here and you'll see when I do that that this 101 number is going to change to 102. So we click here on the door and I actually click on the tag if I want to click over here and you'll see that that changed to 102 and we're pulling that information from the space. I'll just switch it back to where it was 101. Now let's take a look at this space and see where you enter the information into it and what information can be transferred to the window object. So you'll see here this Office 1 is the space name and that's being listed here. If we click the Settings button, you'll see that in the Additional Data section, we can list the Room ID or we can pull the Room ID, the Building Number, in this case we'll call this B1, Building 1, the Floor, which is L1, Level 1. So from this here we can get those three pieces of information plus we can get the numbering so we can get the room number and also the room name so they're the things that we can get from the space now let's take a look at a window object and see where these things are listed or where you can list them so we'll select the window object and this happens to be a styled object so We'll edit the style to access this information. So you would click the settings button. The objects don't have to be styled, but in this case they are. So we'll click the settings button. So you'll see here that for any of these user fields, except for these four numeric ones here, we can pull information from the space. And you can see here that by switching this from manual to preset, you'll see here we've got the five space options, which is the space name, the space number, the space building, the space floor, and the space room. Now what I'm doing here is concatenating or joining two different space fields. So I pulled here the space building, so that's B1, and the space room ID, which is the 101, and the separator that I put between them is a dot, but this, this can be anything you want. It could be a dash, spaces, you know, whatever you want. And so, that's what's building this, this number here. And so once I do that, then if we go back to looking at the schedule that we had again, 
and you'll see here that if we look at the formula for this room name, this is window six user one field. So let's take a look at this again. Edit the style, click on settings, and you'll see here that our user one field is set to the space name. Now the reason that this is this says no space found is because this is a styled object. So the actual style definition, which is what we're looking at here, is not finding any space because it's just sitting in the in the library. Uh, it's not actually on the drawing. So it's only the style instances that will find the information. So, so this is kind of normal. As I said before, you don't have to be using styled objects, but you'll see as the movie progresses why I've done that in this case. So that's how we are getting the room information into this schedule here, this Office 1, Office 2, Office 3. The primary motivation for adding this functionality to Windor is to allow this kind of thing in a schedule where you have door types or window types where you list the type only once or in only one row you have the quantity and you have the door or window IDs pertaining to that particular type. So in this little building here, we have two different sliding door types, sliding door one, sliding door two types. These are actually styled objects and they need to be styled objects. There's two of these and six of those and these are the door and window IDs that pertain to those particular objects. Now, before we look at the window objects and how you set this up, uh, I want to mention a couple of things. Firstly, to get you started with these schedules, you're going to see that if you go to Reports, Create Report, and go to Preformatted Report under Window, you'll see the uh, a new uh, Window Door Type Schedule and a Window Window Type Schedule. And you can use those uh, as the basis for your schedules. Obviously, there'll still be a little bit of tweaking for the other things that you need to display. Let's take a look at this database row formula. So this is listing everything that has the, the window on schedule set to door and it is only listing the, uh, the objects from the layer called door types. And just keep that in the back of your head because I'm going to mention that again in a moment. And then the final thing to note is that this, the function that is being used in here is a custom function we have created that um, displays or that, that does the calculation to produce the IDs in here. So let's now take a look at a window object and see how we set this up. So this is a styled object, uh, SD2. We click Edit Style. We click the settings button and in scheduled data, we can then see that down the bottom here, we have some new options. The, the most important one to make this work is this one here. So which field is, are you nominating your type or style? So we are using user field three. If you're not using this, then you just set it to none. But here we're using user field three. It can be any of these other fields as well. User field 3, and in user field 3, we are choosing style name as a preset. So we've got style name chosen here, and the style name is SD2, sliding door 2, and that's what makes the system work. It doesn't matter which of the user fields you use, but you need to nominate whichever one you are using in this pop-up here. Now, a moment ago, I said that the schedule itself was reporting on a single layer, and when it's reporting on a single layer, you need to check this box here as well to tell Windor to only be looking uh, for objects that are on uh, the, the Windor layer or the single layer only. The only options here are either to look across all layers, so it will, it'll pull IDs from all the layers in the drawing or a single layer only. You can't have it pulling information from selected layers. Even though the worksheet can do that, this function doesn't have the ability to do that. So that's one limitation that it has. 
we're also doing the same ID thing. We're using the space building and the space room ID for uh, to populate the second field in the ID here, but that uh, is not required to make this functionality work. So once we have this information in place, then our worksheet is going to populate as you see here. Now the first time that you recalculate a worksheet, you're going to get this dialog because the worksheet is running an external script. My advice is to just click the always execute scripts button and this, this dialog won't appear again in this session of Vectorworks. If you click execute, then it will come up the next time. If you click, click block or block all scripts, then it's not going to work. So this is the one that you should click. And once you click that, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So the final option is variation on the last one. And that is where you might have a door or window assembly that, or type, that's essentially the same, but it varies just in the length of it. So for example, here we have three sliding doors, for example, they're all using the style sliding door three, but they're three different widths. Uh, so these need to be listed separately, but they are still the same using the same style or type. I guess a better example for this might be where you had a sliding door with say a fixed glass panel at one end and the sliding doors may be all the same size, but the panel just varies depending on which apartment or which office it, it went into. So this is a, just a variation on, on the same theme. So let's take a look at how we do this. And the only difference in terms of the worksheet itself is that in the previous worksheet we were looking at, we were summing by the door type. So summarize items for the door type is selected but for this one you also need to choose that for the overall width so summarize items for the overall width as well and that means that these will be listed separately so let's take a look at a window object at how you set that up and it's fairly simple it's just a variation on the same theme we'll go to edit style click settings and all you need to do to make this functionality work is to check this box here, overall width. So that means that overall widths are going to be looked at and listed separately. If your overall widths are all the same anyway, then checking this won't make a difference. But if you're using the same type and there are different widths, then, then checking this will make that work. Now there's one other thing here that you need to be aware of for this particular functionality to work and that is that in the copy and apply styles you need to uncheck the form option here so normally in a styled object you will have all of these options checked except possibly the the id numbers because the id numbers are going to vary there will be cases where you're using door and window types where you want the type to have the same door number so you might might not always have that on uh, or, or switched off but for, for this particular one you'll want to have the form overall size and type unchecked but leave the window and door type checked now while we're looking in this dialog uh, there's one other thing that i recommend or that we've added for, for 2019 and that is this checkbox here apply the settings below to all objects using this style. Now, this may seem like a, a normal thing, but if you've been using window styles up to this point in time, you'll know that unlike other style objects in Vectorworks, window can choose what aspects of a particular style definition each instance uses and that can mean that even though you define a style, the instances don't all use that style. If you want to force all of the instances of a particular style to use the settings in this dialog, then you need to click that box there. And I would say that for this kind of functionality that we've been talking about in this video, that, that this would always be on. 
So the only thing then is, you know, are you using the, the have, are you having varying lengths in a style? If you're having varying lengths, then you'll want to uncheck that. Uh, and then your ID numbers, whether or not you're having unique ID numbers on instances or not. And that would be uh, whether you check that or not. So with all of those things in place, then this functionality will work. So you'll then get the, uh, the schedule looking like this with the door types listed separately based on the overall width. The final thing I just wanted to mention is about working with styled window objects. Now, there is another movie that goes into a lot more detail about styled objects, but just briefly, what I'm going to do is to demonstrate how I create a styled object and then use that object to replace some of the other styled objects in this, uh, in this little drawing here. So this is the object I've created. It's unstyled. And to convert it into a styled object, I can simply come here and go to New Plugin Style. From Unstyled Plugin, I can also right click on it and choose New Plugin Style from Unstyled Plugin. Either way, you can choose where it gets stored in your library. Perhaps you've got a folder for these things. Then we can name this, and I'm going to call it HD1 is the style name. Now the important thing here is then to choose the aspects of this item that you want to have styled and you do that by clicking the copy and apply styles dialog. And in this case, I'm going to choose to style everything except for the ID numbers. And importantly, you need to check this option here to force all instances of this to use these settings. So once we've done that, we can click OK and OK. And this is now a styled object. So let's say I want to replace this door, this door and this door here. So I've got three doors selected and I want to replace those with this styled object here. So we come up here, I go replace and I choose HD1, which is this one we've just used here. We choose that as the one, click OK, and you'll see that those th three objects got replaced. You can see that their IDs were preserved because they were, that ID was already stored in that instance. And essentially that's, that's as simple as it is. And then if I make a, a change to this style, so let's edit the style and in the form, let's say I change this from double hung to fixed glass, click OK. And what you're going to see is this sash here is going to change. It'll be a subtle change, but nonetheless, click OK. And you can see that that's now uh, a fixed sash and that applied to this object here and also this one up here. So the styles are very powerful in what they can actually do and be used for.